as a place to play. Um, it depends if you're well liked or not. I think, you know, if you're not liked, you can get bottled or hurt, right? Yeah. I've always had great experiences here. I think um, I'm naturally really fond of northern countries and cultures, you know, and the people, the different ones, you know. But I, I grew up on a beach in Southern California with the Mediterranean climate almost, you know. It's like perfect day every single day, and I fucking hate it. You know? So, uh, but I like it up here, and, and it, that's just grown the whole time. What happened with that, to tell you the truth, is uh, there's a funnier story. Um, on one of these tri trips, you know, I heard everybody doing that. One of my tri trips to the UK, you know, the footy champ, but then it was adopted by people, not just Leeds supporters, right? And I was like, and then the World Cup was coming up, and I was like, I have to set that thing to a tune and see if I can just go buck wild enough against whatever they say. And then so I did that, and then um, I read in the paper, somebody showed me that somebody in the Scottish Parliament said, this is exactly what we don't want. I, I vote to ban this this track from any radio play in Scotland. And, it, and, and he got the motion passed. It's like, this is a bad example for the year. Which is so funny, I thought, because it was nonsensical, you know? But I like the idea of something a song that doesn't really have a tune, just sort of taking it over. Using it as your own? Well, it isn't for me, it's for everybody else just to have a laugh, because mm -hmm. I give a fuck about footy, you know? But at the same time, I don't care what the team is specifically, you know? If my mates in, in Liverpool who are mad for it, wanted to go one time, I would go and just enjoy the day with them. See, I don't care who's playing. I just would be really enthusiastic about everybody being so into it. And a lot of times musicians get a pass too, especially where where people are so mental about footy, you know? So, like we have fans that like, one of our fans is the head of the Chelsea head hunters, basically, you know? And he doesn't care if I don't like sports, he enjoys the music. So, and I, I could give a crap about those guys. Of course, you know, there's a lot of stuff, you know, uh, if you want to back up from just like, of course, Mary Chain, uh, people do it, do it yourself stuff, of course, you know, McGee and everybody else moving on, uh, in their contribution to popular music, uh, I, th I find Edwin's the process of, uh, Edwin Collins' process of sort of um, carrying on and uh, really inspiring. He's a great guy. I, th I think that's just a beautiful thing. See, everybody, all everybody in my family lives for a really long time. I just lost my grandma uh, at the beginning of this tour from a stroke. Everybody has a stroke in my family, so I know how it is. You know, like, uh, um, and I, I found his process really inspirational before the film. You know. Uh, but the postcard stuff, I love do-it-yourself culture. It doesn't matter if it was that pop, you know? Um, and if you look at our 1995 record, Take It From The Man, here I am thinking Bill and Sebastian before anybody in America even knew about them. You know, I already had Tiger Milk and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, Simple Minds in the 80s, it's just like the big stuff. I like anything that's good. Is you that know, I, I fucking hate the Bay City Rollers. <laughs> I hated them when I was a little tiny kid, so I don't care what people think. But I guess you, I guess you, you win some and you lose some, right? Well, even the record shops in town, I just love the the people that love love it. You know, I, I see. I like all the north, the northern stuff. I mean, the sensibility agrees with my disposition. I think, except Maybe. I'm totally different than all all you guys. <laughs>
like all these other cuts in the music business, I actually like playing uh, playing music, and I like to write music every day. So a lot of my peers, when they started out, you know, they fancied being in the enemy and melody maker and sounds and all that stuff. But it seemed to me it was a means to an end to fuck blonde girls and get Porsches or whatever. And then they got they got dropped, and so then you don't hear about them, you know. And and their bad record deals, of course, that they went for. The record company owns their name. Nobody, I knew about the business, so I was always like, screw you guys. From the very beginning, I was like, um, wanted to play a game where I was like, no. Uh, uh, these guys are going to tell me that they're going to make me the next Kurt Cobain, and I'm going to tell them to fuck off. And then I'll just get popular no matter what if I just stick with it. And then I'll just, just, just do it to be a thorn in their side and just go for it, you know, because I really believe in making your own culture. I, I'm, see, I'm more, I, I'm, I hate rock stars. I'm more interested in, in this folk mentality of, that it, it, it's like an ecosystem that you create the things that you need in your life, and that slowly expands outwards, you know, your, your little community, and then that what you're doing is you're, the folk is like people, and you're creating something that, brings people together it becomes the glue and it requires the people too so you see that in the record shops down here and stuff you know how it's like oh here's the cafe and here's all these people next door there's a thrift shop I mean a vintage shop and all of a sudden it just starts changing the whole neighborhood and people are down there every day you know in the records and it's all together see and you got the music scene happening and it's just you know and, and that's what I'm into I, f I fucking hate the concept of this, this bastard Simon Cowell. I don't want validation from some fake fucking TV show or all this bullshit. See, so what we would do this stuff like we would go up to a Chinese restaurant that had a bar inside it and we'd say, you know, we want to rent this after nine o'clock when you close. You know, we're going to play some records and we're going to have a little band play and you get to keep the bar. So you have, you know, your two brothers that would work that and we're going to keep the three quid for the, for the door. And we just make these parties soundgasm and just move it around. So next time it'd be at a pub, next time it'd be at a Masonic temple. And just do these and just keep them. Next time we break into a warehouse, just keep doing this thing. And I always use that principle. You just create your own thing instead of fucking going to a, cl a club and saying, Ooh, we booked my band and all this other shit that people do that doesn't work. I was always interested in sharing gear, sharing places to live, cohabitating, sharing bands and just making stuff happen, inventing bands just for your mates, just, you know, like, I don't want to say it's like communist, but a real collective spirit, which that's why I identified with the postcard and all these other phenomena when it was cooking, you know, some of the creation stuff and all this other stuff, you know, and I forgot we didn't, we didn't drop how important, uh, you know, My Bloody Valentine is. But we don't even know if that guy's Scottish, Irish, American, right? Kevin. No, I love him. So, I don't know he's Scottish or something. Zasad Stronka, Zapalas. You know, when I bump into people, see, there are no rules, and I, I, I understand how the interwebs work and, and this thing called discovery. And discovery, there's the way that they do it with where it's like Spotify, they're like, oh, you like Bobby Gillespie, you also like the Rolling Stones. And it's just right there, a suggestion. But there's this other thing where things are connected. And um, in the future, I know that just branching out in all these different languages and everything just connects everything. Uh, but um, so I write so much music, I'll just bump into people and go, hey, why don't you help me do this song in this language? And they're like, why do you want to do that? Everything sucks in my country. I'm like, because, man, in 50 years, people are going to appreciate you, that you made the effort. They're not going to appreciate you. You know, I tell these guys, I'm like, look, motherfucker, you're never going to be the stone roses of fucking Ukraine. In the England, they're, they're, they're going to laugh at you. I don't care how much you love Oasis. You're never going to be the Oasis of the UK coming from the Ukraine. It's like you, you fucking got your head up your ass. First of all, you know what I mean? So, sing a song in Ukrainian and I'll help you record your record. We'll figure out who you are, but also do this. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm like, I don't care what you want to do. I enjoy it, you know? I enjoy also defying the, the whole age thing. See, because um, when, when we started playing music, me and my friends, you know, like 12, 13, we would invent bands just because some of these parents were out of town, you know, and we would, I would, I would bring two girls to the liquor store and I would tell them to sit down on the little, 
you know, that concrete bumper for the cars to pull up. And I would just stay there, two cute girls, and I'd walk up to the first builder who pulled up in a truck, and I'd go, Mister, I'm trying to get laid. Will you help me buy some beer? I'm just like, Phew. you know, when I was like 12 and 13, it was like work every time, you know? And then um, we'd throw these bands together and do like punk rock or psychedelic or whatever and just have these parties with like a thousand kids would show up. So we be became like the anti coolest people, you know? We were hated by all the jocks and the footy people and everybody you can imagine that loved Led Zeppelin and ACDC and fuck all those people and their music. You know, and we were into everything that was cool in the universe and watching Echo and the Bunnymen and PIL playing and, you know, it was real natural for me to listen to Jimi Hendrix and also love fucking the Buzzcocks and everything to me was just mind expanding. It all sounds weird on acid, you know, but, uh, and we were like really weird that way, you know what I mean? But I, uh, so, yeah. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Absolutely nothing, but you know, but people didn't people didn't know like our first loads of shows. You know, the, all the record companies were trying to sign us, and um, we'd have like 600, 900 people pay to get in. You know, I ran out these in San Francisco when we started the group. It was crazy from the very beginning. In the movie, they try and portray like, oh yeah, the Denny Worlds are playing at this crazy show in Ireland, and everyone's playing for ten people at a socialist hall. They're not saying we sold we, we sold out a club and then we went and played again at somebody's fucking workers hall all night. They're like, we'll bake you some food. We're like, okay, we'll just play and you invite your friends over because we just like playing, you know. But what's well, changed? You know, there was like riots every single time we played. It was like it was like when the Rolling Stones and the Yardbirds were playing back in the days. People didn't even know what to do with that energy. You know, they would be tipping up the tables, and not because they're angry or thugs. It's just like this crazy crush of people from the energy of being young. And a lot of people didn't even know what to say. There was no oasis. There's nothing to compare it to. So there was this, like, people would be yelling, Yo, you're the fucking monkeys. You know what I mean? It would be the weirdest thing in the world. They just didn't even know what was going on, you know? You have to remember, there's all these copycat bands of, like, Red Hot Chili Peppers, really bad shit. You know, and every single guitar player that had a haircut didn't know what else to do but throw in a Guns N' Roses lick. And you could tell all these guys practicing scales. Like, I can listen to anybody who plays guitar and go, well, the minute they play that B chord, I'm like, oh, you learned from a Beatles fucking guitar book because nobody used that chord except somebody who transposed it to piano. I mean, you had to learn that hardest chord in the world to play that they're not even playing because they're using a capo or whatever. You know, it's like some, but I can always tell. It's like Elliot Smith or something. Just listen to the music and I'm like, okay, you learned how to play guitar by this. And the same thing with all these guitar leads, you know, these weird leads that have, it's like autopilot. But um, what's changed? I think a lot of, there's a lot of people that are really, um, that seem to be receptive to good music, even though there's not so many of them. Like, it's not going to be necessarily youth, a youth phenomenon, but we play every place in America. There's no no UK bands. Like, we, you know, we just played for over a month and a half to like a thousand people or more a night. And people don't fucking tour like that. When Oasis came to America the first time, they played eight shows, and that was a US tour. You know, we're, we're playing like every day for a month and a half. You know what I mean? So then we come back that. again and we do more. We're just taking a little break because we've done so much, you know? We're going to do the rest of all Eastern Europe, and then we're going to go to South America and all this other shit, I guess. But yeah, we've been playing three hours every single day. You know? And you're going to continue that for too? Yeah, because nobody does that, and I think it's interesting. You know what I mean? It's like, the, the Cure will play for three hours, but the thing about The Cure is that's going to be their greatest hit, hit record, and everybody's going to freak out. And then they're gonna to get to that point where they had their comeback with disintegration, and it's like another two hours of interchangeable music, it might as well be the same song, you know? And we're not like that, you know? It's like, we just throw down in, endless amount of songs. And there are people that have those, but it's just like, you know, there's all these different levels. Like, you see, my, my, my art is conceptual art. I press record and make all this shit up. I don't sit there and bounce a ball. I don't go 
Nigel Goodrich make this fucking record fantastic because if you strip down every Radiohead song, it's like it's Tom moaning with his acoustic guitar interchangeably, but then all of a sudden he's got Burial doing dubstep or whoever else is in there. You know, and, and, and Johnny Greenwood's so talented, he's like, okay, I'm just gonna fuck with these bl blips and blobs, you know? So, but they're never gonna make a better sounding record. It's just gonna be another fascinating record that satisfies everybody who loves them. You know, they're not gonna fucking dazzle anybody. You know what I mean? Like this new record, people are like, oh great, they're making a psychedelic record or something, you know? I guess they've been listening to Tame Impala and BGM or whatever. It just switches around, but you know, it's like back the same way. You know, he's never going to make a better sounding record than um, Sea Change or something. And that was just, okay, I'll become Nick Drake. Watch me do it with the insane amount of talent. But yeah, I've never even made a great sounding record. See, I, I'm planning to record Tony Visconti's track. That's going to be trippy. You know, that'll be like Mark Bolin now, except I don't sing like a fucking cookie elf. Oh, la la, do, do, tra, la. So in the live medium, then it becomes performance art. See, it's like jazz or something. It lives or dies in front of people, with people, and that folk thing. So that's why I'm playing it for so long. It's because I want to hear the music live and everybody to experience it together. It's just, you know, it's just convenient to the people watching that I'm elevated in a certain posi position. I would just as soon play in an amphitheater where they were all elevated. You know what I mean? It's just it happens to be the, the format is this way. Like I don't think of myself any, any different than anybody else, you know? <laughs> I get like in a blackout, you know, obviously I can't see very deep scores and scores of people, you know. Um, I'm my own person, so I get in my own zone. But I, I just hope that, you know, that I can block everything out and just that it, it, it clicks with everyone. I think, like tonight, I hope that they just enjoy it, you know. Because it's not pre-packaged and we're not playing to backing tapes, you know. I play in festivals and everybody's playing to their fucking laptop. You know, everybody, it doesn't matter who, you know, that's just what they do and we're not even about that. So it's kind of interesting to see it as what it is, you know, like it either lives or it dies. And I have no illusions that, you know, one day it will, I won't be doing this. I know people might look at my whiskers and go, oh, you're an old guy, but my beard went white when I was like 30, you know, so it's, that's just genetic. I don't dye my hair. So it's like, you know, but one day I can remember when we started the group that day that Sergeant Peppers was 20 years old, you know, basically, you know what I mean? I mean, I remember that day when Sergeant Peppers record, well, it was a little bit before we started the group, but I remember when Sergeant Pepper was 20 years old. Well, I've had my band for more than 20 years, so I could see that passing of time. And Paul was young then, young and shitty still. Now he's just old and shitty. So I mean, I'll, I'll, I just want to avoid the shitty part. I want to see if I can defy gravity, you know, somehow. Because what I want to say was, it, my I, I got off on a tangent. My thing was never about fucking girls, play music to fuck girls because, you know, I, I was already with, I already had girlfriends, see, that had nothing to do with playing music, so I was interested in playing music, so I never became obsessed with teenagers or being like a teenager. For us to play in clubs when we were growing up, because music is associated with revolution um, in America, you have to be of drinking age, and the drinking age is 21, so your, your opinions are already formulated before you can even go see a band. So we had to act older just to get be able to let in a club, see if we wanted to play a concert. When we were like 12, 13, 14, we had to be some really fucking mature 14 year olds, else it wouldn't happen. So it's a total different headspace than going, oh my God, I'm losing my hair, hairline or whatever. How am I gonna get laid? You know, this is not even the teeny bopper thing. It's okay, can you say there's no way? Well, the one thing that I learned that was the most important thing, first of all, was, you know, that 
it, it, it's like a metaphorical sense, you know, like every, everybody was offering me record deals in the whole world, every company. And I said, you know, just get me a studio and I'll produce bands and I'll make all these crazy fucking records. And they're like, you need to focus. And I kept saying, well, no, just fucking give me a recording studio. But the minute I said, I am the producer, then I just got a million dollar check, see? Because that was incontrovertible. But it was weird rhetorically, but that's all it took. And nobody can teach you that. Now I just taught, taught somebody else how to say, say that. But, so there's that. But then there's the other metaphor of like, um, it doesn't matter how hard you row your boat if you can't bail water faster than it's coming through a hole in the bottom of your boat or plug that hole, your boat's gonna fucking sink. So most people in most groups are doing the absolutely wrong thing. They're rowing so hard but in a sinking boat instead of plugging a hole or bailing water. And you see it all the time. All these great drummers are in shitty bands and then they just get to be 30 years old and quit and sell their gear. It's this endless sort of thing.